So this Christmas, I woke up to find Santa had left me an extra special gift under the tree. Super Mario Chess. As both a fan of Mario and an avid chess player, I was pretty excited to unwrap this. And today, I thought it would be fun to open this game up and talk a bit about it. This game was made by USopoly and marketed as a collector's piece. On the front, we can see pictures of Mario, Peach, Yoshi, Bowser, and Bowser Jr. Honestly, this is probably the least interesting Mario cover for anything that I've seen. I think it would have been cool to see some original art, or at least anything other than these stock Mario pictures from Google Images. In saying that, the images are very crisp, and I feel like they were placed with some purpose, so I'll give them points for that. Also on the front it says Super Mario Chess, which again, looks like it was made in Photoshop in like three minutes. On the sides, we can see some more stock art of Mario, Yoshi, Bowser, and Luigi. It's a little weird that Luigi's not on the front, considering that he's one of the queens, and that the characters on the sides aren't different from the ones on the front, but again, these images look good and are totally serviceable. I'm just being nitpicky. The back of the box is definitely more interesting, with text about the game, the two teams, and a picture of what the board looks like once it's all set up. For being a collector's item, I gotta say that this box art is kinda lacking. It looks fine, and it being made in tin is a huge plus, but there's so much more that could have been done with it. I do really like the window showing off the characters inside, though. As we can see, Mario, Luigi, Yoshi, and Bowser are featured on display here, and at a glance, look quite nice. Opening up the box, we're greeted with a whole lot of figures. Just a quick warning before we get started, I noticed that a lot of these figures in the first section were really difficult to get out, out of all the figures I've unboxed, these were by far the hardest to unpackage. The tight fit combined with the thin features of the characters really made me sweat a bit, as I can totally see someone breaking these little guys before even getting them out of the box. Thankfully, once out of the box, these characters look amazing. The box advertises that they've been painted by hand, and I gotta say, they did a really darn good job. Mario and Luigi look a little weird, but everyone else is super spot on, and the detail is stunning. I think Bowser is probably my favorite. He's got some real weight to him, and he looks incredible. Peach and Daisy are also really well done, and I have to give props to the attention to detail on Birdo specifically. I literally never knew she had a ring up until recording this. That's so cool that they added that. The second section of the box holds all of the pieces that serve as the pawns, and I can't sing the praises of these enough either. The coins look really well done, and the Koopa shells have this really satisfying feel to them. The same goes for the Toads and Goombas. The last thing in this box is the chessboard itself, which... Well, it's a chessboard. I think it would have been cool to see some Mario blocks as the board squares, and now that I'm saying that, I kind of want to make one myself. But honestly, this board is fine as it is. Maybe the added detail was just too disorientating? Who's to say? And here's what it looks like all set up. Gotta say, seeing everything lined up like this really makes me want to see some chess in action. Well, don't just stand there, guys. Come on. Wait, what? Guys, come on, quit kidding around, the cameras are rolling. Okay, this is a bit of a problem, so to remedy this, how about I give my volunteers, and you at home, a quick crash course on how to play. Disclaimer, I'm by no means a chess expert, this is just strictly the basics of what each chess piece does. Okay, let's start with the pawn, represented here by the coins and shells. This guy can do one thing, and one thing only, and that is move forward. On the first move of a pawn, you can choose between having the move between two spaces or one. When a pawn is directly diagonal to another piece at the start of its move, you can choose to take that piece and move your pawn to that square. Other than that, they're the most basic pieces on the board, but still useful as a quick defense. On the two far sides of the board are the rooks, represented by the toads and goombas. These are your heavy-duty movers. Rooks can move up to seven spaces in any of the four cardinal directions. They can be great for picking off stragglers in their sight, while also being able to retreat from most other pieces safely. Just don't let all their power go to your head. Now that we've seen one of the most straightforward pieces, let's take a look at one of the more unusual ones. And coincidentally, one that the Rook just took out back there. The Knights, being portrayed by Yoshi and Birdo, are... strange. They move in an L shape, two spaces in one direction and then one space in an adjacent direction. It doesn't matter which of these directions you perform first, as long as they're done in one move, meaning the knight has a total of eight different moves that it can do at any one time. Next up are the bishops, represented by Peach and Daisy on Team Mario and Magikoop on Team Bowser. 
If the rooks were your brute-like tanks, then the bishops are your fast-moving snipers. They can move seven spaces in any diagonal direction. Bishops can cover the board much quicker than other pieces and are perfect for trapping your opponent. And now, it's time for the big guns, the ones to be reckoned with. The Kings, Mario and Bowser. Each one of them being able to move an extraordinary... One space. Yeah, that's it. You'd think being the king means you're at the top of the food chain, and while that's certainly true for the piece's status, it by no means represents their abilities. They can move a grand total of one space in any direction, cardinal or diagonal, and that's it. They're nearly defenseless on their own, which is especially bad considering that if either of these pieces get taken out, it's game over. Easily the weakest and least useful piece by far. When attacking a king, you must first say check on the turn that you get into position. Should the king not have any moves that would allow them to escape, you can claim a checkmate. Now, it's time for the real big guns, the ones that are really to be reckoned with. The queens, being portrayed by Luigi and Bowser Jr. A bit of a missed opportunity to not have Peach or Daisy be the queen, but sure. The queens are awesome. They're a late game piece for sure, but once they get moving, there's no stopping them. They can move up to seven spaces in any direction. They're good for just about any situation, and best of all, knocking a queen out doesn't immediately end the game. King. In all, I gotta say, I love this set a lot. I know that might be surprising considering what I had to say about the case and playing board, but let's be honest, we're here for the figures. And gosh, these are some really well-detailed figures. They're great for chess, they're great as display pieces, heck, they'd even look good in a diorama. I'd easily rate this set a 9.5 out of 10 on those figures alone. Just shy of a perfect score from the board and container, but come on. That's a small price to pay for something so cool. Speaking of prices, I've seen these go in stores anywhere between $40 and $80, so they can be a bit pricey. As I said, I did get this as a Christmas gift, but even if I'd bought this myself, I don't think I'd rate it any lower. Simply put, it's one of the best pieces of merchandise I've ever gotten.